Today, this woke white lady is going to explain to us the tenets of white supremacy culture, and in doing so, she's going to be pretty darn racist, if you ask me. Let's take a listen. You know what? I am going to hold your hand when I say this. Come in. Come in. Oh. Just grab. All right. Is that nice? Kind of condescending way to start a video, but okay, I guess. If you find yourself to be defensive when someone confronts you with something, if you don't like having conflict with anyone, if you are always striving for perfection in yourself, if you always are labeling things as good or bad or labeling people as good or bad, if you value logic over people's feelings when you're trying to make a decision, if you always feel like you need to be in a rush to do something, to do more, that way of living is toxic for you and for other people. And it comes from you. Uh oh. Oh my. Big word. I know. Big word. She's it's saying okay. it's white supremacy culture. <sighs> now, you don't have to be white to have these behaviors. Our entire society is built off of these and loves these. Oh my God. She is actually, let's look at this list again, <laughs> saying that the written word objectivity. Quantity over quality, individualism, defensiveness, and a sense of urgency are all characteristics of white supremacy culture. Babe, those are just personality traits. Some good, some not so good, some mixed bag that some people have and some people don't. And not all white people have them and some minorities do. Like what you're talking about doesn't even make sense. My favorite one of all of these is the idea that if you're defensive when somebody confronts you with something, for example, accuses you of being racist, that th therefore that is a trait associated with white supremacy culture proving that you are racist. It is the definition of a catch-22. If you're accused of racism and you accept it, you're a racist. If you're accused of racism and you're defensive against it, yeah, it's also proof you're a racist. So there's literally no way any accusation of racism or bigotry can be ever refuted. It's a Kafka-esque mind trap. And how are you going to suggest that valuing logic over feelings when making a decision is a white supremacist thing? Are you you realize you're implying that black people are illogical and consumed by emotion. That sounds kind of racist, babe. I don't know about y'all. Maybe I'm just a crazy bigot, but I was under the impression that people of all races and backgrounds can be logical or irrational. I guess I just haven't been educated enough in the tenets of white supremacy culture. Maybe that's my toxic individualism showing. There's a little bit more to this video that I guess was interesting and this is not your fault we were all raised to be this way no matter what we look like where we come from that's what our society is doing to us so well thank you for letting us in on this profound piece of wisdom my dear <laughs> i mean also this just like isn't true we weren't all raised to be perfectionists. We weren't all raised with a sense of urgency. Some people have parents who are constantly late to everything and don't have a sense of urgency. Like sometimes these kinds of things seem to me like ideas so ridiculous and so far-fetched that only somebody with many advanced degrees and years of education could possibly believe them. Anyway, <laughs> one final thought. I would love to see somebody go up to random black people on the street and say, did you know that being on time or wanting to be on time and having a sense of urgency is a trait of white supremacy culture? And then just ask them what they think of that. They'd be like, girl, you're racist. Why would you say that to me? I, I'm not late just because I'm black. How dare you? <laughs> I think they would find this so far-fetched and so absurd and frankly, again, racist. The anti-racist movement is not only a grift, of course, the all of this was produced by very highly paid and well compensated DEI grifters, but it is also one of the most clear cut examples we have of horseshoe theory. There's very funny skits out there that go over this, that if you put like an actual alt-right racist person and a super woke person they in, in a room together, they'll start to agree on things. Like, yes, black and white people should be separated. One of them, just 
calls it segregation, and one of them calls it affinity groups. Yes, skin color is more important than an individual's traits or merits. One, because some skin colors are worse than others, and the other because some skin colors have different marginalized backgrounds and histories. Like, they're reaching similar points. And I guess maybe you could say that the woke side have better intentions, but regardless, they're still ending up in dangerous, deranged, and yes, racist places. It's sad to me that there's an audience for these videos and for these kinds of grifters and influencers. And frankly, I think if I had to guess, it's a lot of woke white women who feel guilty for somehow perpetuating a system they've been told is so horrific and terrible and think that by enabling people like this to grift off of them, they're somehow working on themselves or making themselves better. But if you ask me, content like this is just making everything worse. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below and do hit that like button to reward my suffering. And now I'll read a few of your comments before we wrap up today's episode. 